Yo, what's good everybody? My name is Jay Fatty. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about some more in-depth advanced sampling tips. Okay, so let's get right into it. Now, if you're not using Serato or SliceX or Fruity Slicer, if you're just slicing in the playlist, here's a tip for you. You don't even need to know the BPM, okay? Check it. So I got this track from Tim Weisberg called Touchstone. I'm going to link it down in the description. I'm not going to play it right now because I want to manipulate it and try to avoid some copyright issues. I'm going to pitch the whole thing down like 300 cents. And let's just bring the tempo down to like 76. It doesn't matter right now. I'm just bringing it down to something low. And I'm going to trim also the whole sample by just bringing this trim knob up. It'll get rid of the tail end at the end and the extra space at the beginning as well. So I'm going to chop up loops here. All I need to know is if I'm getting like two or four bars. You got to know how many bars you're getting because that's how we're going to line it up without knowing the tempo. So I know right here at this beginning there's a fill. And right here is where it hits. So I want that beginning part. I'm going to go over here and go to none on the magnet. That way I can move around here freely in the playlist. Press C on the keyboard to get the slicer and I could do a shift left click and just chop right at the beginning of that hit. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this beginning part, and we can move this right up to the front. Now, if I need to, I could also do shift and middle mouse button to nudge this waveform. As long as I'm on the waveform here, hovering over it with my cursor, I could do shift and middle mouse button and move this freely around. So we'll get it right at the start of that hit or the start of that transient. So I just want that right up to here, up to the end of this part. That's only going to be like one or two bars. Now I'll bring this down and mute that. And I'm going to go over here to this chop right here and just do a shift right click at the top left. And while holding shift, do make unique a sample. That way it's just this. Now I can double click this and this will pop up. I'm just going to go over here to the time and I'm going to drag it out to where the end hits two bars. Because I know I only got like one or two bars there. So... Let's just drag this out to two bars like that. And as you can see, these transients are pretty much on point with the grid in the back there. Now I can even drag this out to like four bars. If I double click and make sure it's on stretch mode, it will keep that pitch. Let's bring it down to like 61 BPM. You can hear that's pretty much on BPM now and we never even had to really find it. We just kind of followed along with the sample. So now we have our first chops here. just have this last one hit like four times so I can bring the sample down to like right here and then press C on the keyboard once again shift left click and just chop out this bit right here do a control left click and drag to highlight it then I could do a control B and I'm gonna double click this and make sure it's on generic bleeding I could also go in here if I'm in FL studio 21 go in here and mess with these uh, faders manually we don't need to do that since we can just put on generic bleeding <laughs> All right, now we'll get the next part of our sample chop here. Right over here, I want this bit. So we're going to once again go to none on the magnet and just chop it out. Do the same thing that we did before. Bring this to the front and let's just solo this track so the other track isn't overlapping for right now. And let's get at least like two to four bars. So if we listen. <laughs> Right up here is where I want it to end. It just takes practice listening for the bars and knowing, hearing it with your ears and knowing exactly where it needs to be. So just keep practicing at it and do what sounds right to you and what sounds good to you. But we can, if we count it. That's like two bars. So it ends right here. We'll just chop that out. 
now I can do the same exact thing. Do a shift, right click, make unique a sample, continue holding shift, left click yes, and we'll drag this out to two bars. On stretch, and we still have it picked. And what I actually want to do is the something that I like to call the rinse and repeat method. So we'll have this first bar go three times, and then it'll go into this last bar. All right, so it sounds something like this. And you can hear it loops right, and we know it's on BPM if we listen. Remember, don't be sleeping on using the shift middle mouse button to nudge things around if you need to. You could also use the slip tool here. The slip tool will go off of the grid though, so make sure you're on none or on a snap point that you want, because none will let you move it around freely. Say if I was on one third step, it's only going to be moving in one third steps and so on and so forth. So keep that in mind. All right, so now we got this. It'd be something like this. We have an intro bit right here, and then it goes into the verse. And once again, I'll actually go on to this verse part and put generic bleeding on, so it doesn't have any clicks and pops when it transitions into the next shot. Obviously, it's the same thing with Slice X or Serato, but you know, you would just be doing it via your MIDI. You would have your chops. This is just kind of laying it out and painting it out in the playlist. And I know, uh, you know, some producers prefer this over Serato. But, you know, to me personally, Serato is goaded. If you want to learn more about Serato and some tips and tricks on that program, you can check the link at the top right right now. That'll send you to a video I did on Serato sample not too long ago. Now if we listen to this last bar in the, the verse chop, we could do something with that. If we drag it over like this and then half it and just take the first bit, shift, left click, we can copy it over. And actually, let's bring this back and take this snare hit, shift, left click to drag it over. sleeping on finding little tiny chops like that and just manipulating them into another rhythm okay now another thing that i think is slept on is here we're going to take this beginning chop again bring it right over here when it comes back around but let's actually bring it to its own channel right click consolidate track from track start and hit start it's going to consolidate that all into a waveform and now i'm going to double click it go to stretch pro and just manipulate this. I'll bring it down like 600 cents and it'll add another little extra thing of flavor. Let's even automate that. So I'm going to highlight this area and let's go into another pattern. Let's go into an empty pattern and drag it out to the area as well. And now we'll double click on this and let's, let's go up to the recording, right click and make sure automation and notes is on. Then we'll left click it. And now we're just going to record some movement with this slider. Something like that. And we can have that drop back into this. We listen.
So don't be sleeping on doing something like that as well. So I got one more thing for you, and it's talking about combining chops that make sense. So I got a whole nother song here that I've used for a beat in the past. And I'm going to play you these chop, this chop real quick, and then let's talk about it. So we hear the first part of the samples are very epic, and there's a lot going on. You know, this part. But then it leads into this. Which I really like that shot, but I didn't want to keep repeating it over and over because it's got a lot going on right when it hits. You know what I'm saying? So that could get very stagnant to the ear. But later on in the song, there's a chop like this. That is much more bearable to the ear if you repeat it a few times. And it's pretty much the same thing as the other chop, it's just there's not as much going on. Listen to both of them, you know, side by side here. So you see, it's about combining chops that make sense. You know, if you really like a chop, maybe listen to the song a little bit more and they might do something similar, but with not as much going on, it would make more sense for that one to be the one that's looped instead of every time it hits, there's a crazy loud crash going on. Then you'd have to do some equalization and it could mess up the actual sound in a negative way. So keep those tips in mind when you're sampling in FL Studio. If you'd like to see some more sampling tips, let me know down in the comments. If this video brought you value, make sure you leave a like, hit subscribe, and hit the little bell. Make sure you stay safe, stay striving, and always be getting it. Much love, y'all. Peace.